Good morning again. Welcome to Cotswold Edge. I've been coming here 34 years and the course isn't a great deal older than that. I remember all these trees when they were no taller than me. This is what I call a thinking man's golf course because you've got to use a bit of this and a little less of this. Gentle start. Just waiting for the group in front. Yep, they're gone. Now we can get started. I'll show you around and how I play this wonderful golf course. Well, a very long time ago, I sliced a top flight down the road, which is quite dangerous because those old top flights would go through the front armour of a Tiger tank. Now, I'm taking clubs here based on me playing into a southwesterly wind. And of course we don't have that today. So as I go round, I will be making some mistakes because I've got too much club in my hand off the tee. I suppose that comes from playing on memory rather than what's actually in front of me today. Now these greens are absolutely loaded with hidden burrows. They look fairly flat but they just aren't. But a part of star is always very, very welcome. Now the second hole is just a longer version of the first and it can be a bit of a brute when the wind's blowing. You do have to drive down the right so you get a view of the green. Well, that's a little too much right. And that is an absolute monster flyer. And unknown to me, I thought I'd just gone over this hump at the back of the green, but I'd actually reached the deep stuff. So that wasn't too bad a dig to get it out of there. And the first bogey goes on the card. Now the third is a par five. And again, it's a longer version of the two holes we've just played. Except for this one goes down the hill. Left is dead. Getting the ball out to the right is absolutely essential. Even if you're in the left half of the fairway, then you get blocked out by these trees on the corner. So this isn't a bad drive at all. The fourth is a short par four. Even from the back, it's 275. So down the wind, normal wind, I'd normally try and drive as close to the green as I possibly can. But the green just isn't over there. Now it did spit it out backwards. And I'm thinking, well, perhaps in future, I ought to take an iron off this tee, because this isn't a bad position at all. Now if I had to list my top five hardest par threes, this would be in it. 225 from the back, into the wind, out of bounds left, out of bounds long. If you bail out right, then you're chipping to a green that is running away from you from right to left. So even though I've dunked this into the bunker, at least this one's up the hill, as opposed to bailing out and coming down the hill. 
and slopes can make a huge difference to how you score. Yes. <laughs> I make a lot of birdies on this par 5, even from the white tee. What you have to do though is not cut the corner and get it out the left. If you get it out the left, you've got a chance. If you don't, oh dear. With me being here on the lower level, my only option, divide the hole in two and hit a fade over the top of this bush. You know what, I think I'd forgotten, because I haven't been here since pre-Covid, I'd forgotten how good a golf course this is. And the yearly green fee is £700. So in this time of high inflation, what an attractive offer. Now let's go and play one of my favourite par fours on the planet. Really, one of my favourites. Well with the Cotswold stone wall being in the way, you don't get a great deal of a view of the fairway or that nasty bunker down the right hand side. You need to hit a straight one and uh, that surprised me because I hit a straight one. Woohoo! Well there's greenside bunkers left and right so I'm going to hit a low growler with a hybrid and run it between the two. Yeah, that isn't a low growler though. That's a bit of a wild one. I'm certain the tapping police will have a go at me for that. Well this is rather a tight hole, trees both sides, the practice ground is off to the right. If you go over there you'll never find your ball. Just for once I've actually pulled the right club. Now I've been having trouble with these shorter pitches, less than a full sand wedge. But they are starting to get a little better. And this green's three tiers, it kind of like stands out as being a bit odd compared to the rest of the course. One of the things with YouTube, you get to see if I make a mess. Now I treated this like a three foot putt. I figured that was the only way that I could get this ball to stop by the hole. So I picked a spot about three feet in front of my ball and hit to it. And that's how you deal with nasty downhillers. You put to an imaginary hole. You know what, it's, um, it's very strange with the wrong wind. You're down eight there, I'm used to hitting, you know, from the white tee, 481 yards hitting driver six iron and then struggling to hold the green. Today it's playing a hell of a lot longer from, from the yellow tees. 
Same with nine here just behind me. I'm so used to hitting driver into a three club wind from the back tee and then hitting an eight iron into this green or sometimes a nine iron. Today I've hit five wood and half a sand wedge. Right, Gloucester and Lilybrook, you go up. You go up the hill for the back nine. Cotswold edge, we go down. And it starts here. It's a straight hole. You go over the brow of the hill and then down to a green that runs away from you. And round the back here, you need to use this off the tee box before you start digging into the, uh, into the old bag for your driver. Yeah, I need to play perfect golf round the back. Round the front, you can wail away with the driver a little bit and get away with it. Down here, you really do have to be straight. I can't wait to show you. So 10's dead straight. That big Leylandi in the foreground isn't really in play. It's that row of them down the left that are. So a nice fade does the business. That's better rhythm, isn't it? And from the top of the hill, the green looks like that. So I've gone left to keep the bunkers out of play and I think this shows my inexperience of playing this hole. I think I could have done a whole lot better than that. Now I'm actually quite nervous over this chip because this green is a little bit skittish, it's a little bit faster than some of the others. Now 11 is a downhill par 3. There is rubbish to the right and lost ball. There's a bunker and a huge drop off to the left. There is absolutely nowhere to hide on this hole. Tell you what, when you come here and you play the competition tee, which is up a level back there, an extra 22, 25 yards, nothing really does come into play. Now, because of the lack of wind and the firm ground, this is another error. I'm too close to the green. Oh. And the reason I'm chipping well today is because the rough is exactly the right height that I enjoy for chipping. The ball sits up in it. There's some fluff underneath the ball, if you know what I mean. And it's a lot easier. This is a toughie. The slope of the fairway makes this incredibly difficult. That's why I'm going with the hybrid. And I really wish I hadn't leaked that. That could be in deep bother. Now I've got no direct line to the flag, but that doesn't really matter. Because of the slope of the green, I wanted to go left anyway. That's landed a long way left of the flag. Got away with it. And look where it's finished up. And this green is an absolute nightmare. Oh. oh, Simon.
14 has a number of different tee boxes with different angles. And I honestly can't remember what club I should take here. So I've gone with the 5 wood. And as soon as I've hit it, I thought, oh no, you silly boy. Well, I've never been more grateful for a bit of rough in my life. The lie isn't good, but at least I've still got my ball. Within about six feet of the OB there. Note to self, next time you play it, take your four iron. Fifteen is as tight as they come. The shot I've always chosen for this hole is a four iron over the right half of that tree. But that's the left half. Oh, it's come down. Yep, it reappeared. That bank on the left traditionally is covered in some heavy rough. So I would not expect to have the chance to play that shot. I would have been hacking out from up there somewhere and perhaps getting on the green in three. I don't know whether it's the dry weather or they've just simply decided to mow it. Either way, I'm truly grateful. Well, this hole requires quite a big slider to find the fairway. I've left my bag about 80 yards in front, and in that bag is a three wood I should have been playing. This one is down the 15th. And again, my score is saved by the good grass around these greens. I do like the ball to have a bit of fluff under it. Last hole, dog leg right. You have to drive left. You can't cut this corner unless you're a really big hitter. And this is the penalty. All I've got here is a chip. Well, now we're back on the hole. You can see just how dangerous it is. All the way down the right-hand side to the clubhouse. Fortunately, I'm pretty decent with a fairway wood after years of practice. But this is the first time I've been worried about a chip. Because I'm on the exit to the green and you can see the wear there. But anyway, I've had a fantastic day out. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Cheerio. Mm -hmm.